Last week, the Speaker of the House, Lindsay Hoyle, there's, it's, it's a complicated system how, how Parliament works, but in brief, went against parliamentary protocol because, well, two main reasons. One, because the Labour Party was going to be split because some of the Labour Party are more pro-Palestine and then the leader, Sir Keir Starmer, is trying to be a bit more moderate and, and have a sort of more two-state approach to it. Mm-hmm. But the other reason is, and this was specifically cited by Lindsay Hoyle, the Speaker of the House, was that MPs are being threatened for their lives and we know that this is from Islamists. So what is actually happening in the Commons is that they are going against protocol because of Islamist threats. At the same time this was happening, outside on the streets, outside Parliament, huge protests, and they were they were lighting up uh, the Elizabeth Tower, or Big Ben, mm-hmm. with from the uh, river to the sea. And, and so democracy in Britain is literally being completely undermined by the Islamists. <laughs> So let's do some of the stuff and let's see where the chips fall. Um, You live in London right now. I I cover a lot of what's going on in Europe all the time. And you mentioned uh, October 7th and all that. I saw you just a couple months back in in London. I drove past the Hamas rally. Uh, You guys are having these things all the time. London feels very tenuous, let's say. Like it does not feel like London of, say, your childhood. I think we're we're kind of the same age. What do you make of what's happening in your country right now? It's very bleak and it's very dark. And I, when I saw you, I was I noticed how shaken you were yeah. uh, by it all. I um, I think that was the beginning of November. So I, I'll tell you a story that really affected me, affected me deeply. Is October seventh, obviously happened. I think that was a Friday or Saturday. October ninth, I went to a vigil in Whitehall. Now, Whitehall is a road in London. It's near Parliament. Um, It's near 10 Downing Street. It's where all, um, it's the heart of politics in in Britain. And there was an Israeli, or sorry, an Israel vigil. It was a wonderful affair. It was somber. It was sad. It was, um, there was maybe a few thousand people, quiet, Sings uh, songs were being sung and uh, hymns, rather. It's a Hebrew hymns, and it was awake, um, but it was peaceful. It was a community hurting. And there's a lot of Jews in London, a lot of Jews in Britain. And meanwhile, I was seeing on my phone through Twitter, through a couple of photojournalists I follow, that across town in Kensington, where the Israel embassy is, there were celebrations, jubilant celebrations. Flares were going up. People were on their knees praying, sing, saying Alu Akbar. It, w- it was a, it was, this is two days after, so mm-hmm. there'd been no response from Israel. And it was carnage, joyous, car- like a, it was like a festival. And obviously, like, oh, you know, I'm sure you've seen the October 7th footage. That was the worst pogrom since the war. And how that can be the reaction is just totally shocking. Now, for me, I, later that evening, I went home on the tube and there was someone who'd clearly been there that we were on the same carriage together. And I say clearly been there. Well, he, had, he was wearing the colours. He had a kefir on. And, but most strikingly was that he was, he was sauntering jubilantly. He was, it was, he was happy. Like he was enjoying and, and he was about a metre in front of me. Mm. I was completely distraught by that. I was very angry. I wanted to hit him. I didn't hit him. But I also wanted to break. And um, I was face to face with that. And and that that really had changed me because when you're when you're, you're up front with that sort of what I would say evil, like if you're celebrating October 7th, like something that I, I, I really can't imagine more evil than October 7th. And for your reaction to be that that is a, a, a good thing, uh, I, I, I've never been the same since then. And, and, and I think you, you would have that experience. Now, you, you say there are Hamas protests. Well, they, every, every weekend since there have been protests. I don't think, like, just for the sake of clarity, and it's worth being 
it's worth being um, accurate just for people who disagree because it's not just Hamas supporters. There are Hamas supporters. In fact, I think on the first weekend, there are three women who wore, uh, who on the back of their clothes had taped images of the um, uh, paragliders mm -hmm. on their back. They have since, they've just been uh, charged and prosecuted about two or three weeks ago. One of them was from Gaza. So she'd moved to Britain from Gaza, mm -hmm. fleeing Hamas. She's now in Britain hmm. celebrating Hamas. Hmm. So yes, there are Hamas supporters there. And I've been to a few of these protests to witness, and there are. Now, there are also far-left socialist worker party types, uh, Jeremy Corbyn types. I mean, Jeremy Corbyn's literally there. Yeah. Um, there, there is a far-left British ultra progressive contingent to it and there's quite a few people in between so it's not just pro hamas sure there's the a reason i say that by the way and i appreciate you kind of cleaning it up is that there's no one there that would openly state that they are against hamas right i mean have you ever seen that i've seen one guy once went to one who was like hamas shouldn't do this but you know free palestine and he and he got heckled and kicked out too that, that's it's, it's the, that's much, the distinction, but I, I understand no, that there's, there's many people, even, many different groups there, let's say. I'd go further and say that the, their ire is directed at Israel, the state of Israel. They're yeah. not saying free Palestine from Hamas. They're right. saying free right. Palestine right. from Israel. And th so you are you are accurate in, in, in that sense. Um, so things are worse now, like since you've, you were here. Um, last week, well, I'd, let's, go, let's go back two weeks or three weeks ago, there's an MP called Mike Freer. Yeah in the uh, constituency of Finch Road, Finchley and Golders Green, which is Northwest London. It's a very large Jewish community. Before Christmas, his uh, offices were arson attacked. He has to wear a, 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 wear a um, bulletproof vest everywhere he goes, so he says, and he uh, has had jihadi groups specifically uh, targeting him. There was an MP about two years ago called Sir David Amos who was killed by an Islamist. And the Islamist had first gone to this guy, Mike Freer, to scat, out, scat him out, had also gone to another MP called Michael Gove before finally going to Sir David Amos and killing him brutally. So Mike Freer then says, I don't want to run anymore. It's not safe for me. Okay, so an elected official... Mm -hmm. A democratically elected official doesn't want to represent his constituency because he fears for his life, okay? So democracy is being completely undermined here, but it gets worse. Last week, the Speaker of a House, Lindsay Hoyle, there's, it's, there's a complicated system how, how Parliament works, but in brief, went against parliamentary protocol because, well, two main reasons. One, because the Labour Party was going to be split because some of the Labour Party are more pro-Palestine, and then the leader, Sir Keir Starmer, is trying to be a bit more moderate and, and have a sort of more two-state approach to it. Mm -hmm. But the other reason is, and this was specifically cited by Lindsay Hoyle, the Speaker of the House, was that MPs are being threatened for their lives, and we know that this is from Islamists. So what is actually happening in the Commons is that they are going against protocol because of Islamist threats. At the same time this was happening, outside on the streets, outside Parliament, huge protests, and they were, they were lighting up uh, the Elizabeth Tower, or Big Ben, mm -hmm. with, from the uh, river to the sea. And, and so democracy in Britain is literally being completely undermined by the Islamists. This is now blown up to a whole other story about Islamophobia. Now, there is anti-Muslim hate that's on the, on the rise. There's anti-Semitism is just skyrocketing. You know, we've had synagogues closed, Jewish schools have been closed. What's happening there is atrocious. But there's also anti-Muslim hate and, there's, and, and that should be acknowledged. But then this is blown up into a whole conversation about Islamophobia and this word Islamophobia. Mm -hmm. And so instead of, if it, when there is anti-Muslim hate, they call it Islamophobia, which means that you then can't criticize the Islamists who are literally shutting down parliament or affecting what's going on in parliament. And that, so now there's this huge row about Islamophobia. Meanwhile, almost all of the politicians are too terrified to call a spade a spade and directly address the Islamist issue. The Islamist issue in Britain is massive. Okay, uh, uh, the Manchester Arena bombing, bombing, which happened in 
2017, which is when a young second generation uh, born in Manchester is called Salmon Abedi of Libyan heritage set off a bomb at Manchester Arena, a venue that I'd played a couple of times before and after that event, killing 22 kids and wounding 100 others. Um, uh, how have I got here? Um, so, sorry. Uh, I forgot, I've lost my train of thought, but, uh, well, how the point? That at that, sorry, at that period, the uh, MI5 acknowledged that there were 22,000 jihadis in Britain. A couple of years later, MI5 has said that of the 44,000 extremists in Britain, 90% are Islamists, mm -hmm. which is about uh, 38,000. So 38,000 Islamist extremists in Britain. Now, we're a country that's, uh, which is... I think we're 67 or 68 million people, which is the population of Texas and California put together, but the size of Oregon. So we're, we're a lot denser than, mm -hmm. than these places are here. And there's a lot of Islamists, but you cannot talk about the Islamist threat because of political correctness, because you can't say, you, then you're told, oh, you're, you're being harsh to uh, Muslims. No, you, of course we must stand against anti-Muslim hate, but we must be able to cr criticize Islam which is a serious issue in Britain. If you're looking for more enlightening conversations about international issues, check out our international playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.